Hello and welcome to Live and Local Champlin. I am your host, Ashley Wagner, City of Champlin Communications. Thanks for joining us live at Mississippi Crossings. Over the next hour, we're going to host a few city leaders. We're going to look ahead to some really fun summer events we have planned. And we're going to look back at Father Hennepin Festival, as well as meet the new police chief and shine the spotlight on a few local businesses. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after we take a look at how we kicked off summer a few weeks ago with the Father Hennepin Festival. Each year, this time of year, John, we celebrate our heritage during the weekend of June, and we are situated approximately at the midpoint of the parade route, uh, where the bands, of course, will be playing, and we're looking forward to a great evening. Weather could not be better for this year's parade. They, they dialed it up perfectly for 2023. We're very excited about that. Two marching bands, 60 units. Let's watch some of the action. We're back and we are live here at Mississippi Crossings inside the new event center, which was actually the, the new the, 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 the Hennepin Festival, which you just watched. And now joining us is Champlain Mayor Ryan Savis to talk a little more about the big event, the annual event we hold on the second weekend of June each year. So how do you think it went this year? I think it was excellent. We had great weather for most of Father Hennepin Day. It was a little chill on Saturday evening, but other than that, the weather was fantastic. We had a lot of new events this year with a lot of people that showed up and enjoyed a lot of the new events. Um, the same carnival was packed on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so it was overall a really good Father Hennepin days. And I heard this year your kids were finally able to get you back on some of those rides. <laughs> yes, yes. Some of, the, some of the old rides that were there when I was a kid, I was, I was riding with my kids. So I love it. Did you have a favorite ride this year? I would say the tarantula. Okay, the tarantula, there you go. Mark your calendar for next year and plan to ride the tarantula. How about some of the new events this year? Let's, let's talk through some of those. Yeah, it was exciting when Parks came to me with a couple events uh, that they either wanted to bring back from years gone or, or new this year. One of them was breakfast with the mayor, was Sunday morning of Father Hennepin Days right here at the event center. Uh, we had roughly 100 people that showed up. Uh, it was all you can eat pancakes and sausages and some drinks and uh, thanks to Willie McCoy's, they were a sponsor of it as well, and uh, it was an excellent event. I hope that we can grow that in the future. It was uh, fun to sit down and visit with families and 
hear what they have to say about whether it was Father Hennepin Days or, or anything else in the city. And I heard one of the highlights of that event was a pancake flipping type contest that uh, even parents got involved in. Yes, the pancake flipping, <laughs> absolutely. A few of them landed on the floor, but uh, yeah, it was a fun event. And then we followed that up with uh, the talent show, which mm -hmm. was new this year down at the Amity Theater. That was uh, something I was really looking forward to. I was a judge on that. Uh, to me, that was one of the highlights of the weekend. Uh, you know, that was just what that uh, area was all about. Mm -hmm. Not just concerts all the time, but being seeing kids up there from, from young, young toddlers to adults uh, performing different things from cool yo-yo tricks to uh, dances and, and singing and the piano, you name it. And so I didn't realize uh, judging was going to be so hard. It was, <laughs> it was rather difficult, but it was a fun deal. And we had a lot of excellent talent right here in Champlin. Mm -hmm. And something we added that day was the top three finishers are going to come back in July and perform during the intermission of one of our concert series. So yes. really fun event. It was really busy, and I can't wait to see how that, uh, that event grow. And we even partnered with a local business for that one, um, Spark School of Music and Dance. And he is correct. In case you missed it, the top three performers will be here taking the stage on Thursday, July 27th, during the Elvis Presley tribute. Um, so be sure to come up here to Mississippi Crossings if you want to hear them. That is a really cool event. Um, what about the parade? I thought it was better than ever this year. Yes, it was fun. Uh, it was a fun parade. I got to go through with my entire family and some of their friends. Uh, and the kids went through. We handed out stickers and koozies and way too much candy. Uh, <laughs> weather was excellent. That parade is always well attended. And mm -hmm. uh, it was really fun to go through as mayor and see uh, residents cheering and and a lot of good things to say about our community. Um, so that parade is, I always look forward to it. It's, it was a lot of fun. Well, fun. And of course, we, as usual, had the nightly concerts on Friday and Saturday with some, some actually big headliners. Yes, they were, they were pretty fun, uh, a lot of fun. I was able to make it for an hour on Friday night and a little bit on Saturday. Uh, even though the weather dropped off and it was cold on Saturday night, they were uh, put on a good show, so it was fun. So keep uh, looking forward to the next year's Father Hennepin and see who the headliners are because they always put on a good act. I love that. And any takeaways for next year? Well, I hope we can continue to grow some of the new events and keep adding things. Uh, now that we have the crossings, you know, for the most part, fully online. Uh, we added, you know, the movie uh, on Friday night at the Anthony Theater. That was completely packed. Yeah. So things like that for kids and adults, there's something for everybody. So keep track to all the events. There's so many to do. And, uh, it's a good family family weekend in Champlain. Awesome, well, I love that. And in case you're wondering, you want to learn more about Father Hennepin Festival or make sure you mark your calendar for it annually, it's always that second weekend in June and you can go to fatherhennepinfestival.com to learn more. Awesome. Well, let's talk about the rest of summer. We've got a lot of fun ahead and we've really worked hard to activate the riverfront here at Mississippi Crossings for residents. Um, I want to talk through just some fun and unique things we think residents should put on their bucket list, starting with obviously experiencing Mississippi crossings. And uh, let's start with even the new playground. Let's say you just want to come up here and play for a day. Do your kids like this new playground? Absolutely. It's the biggest <laughs> hit in Champlain. I got, you know, I have an eight year old and almost 10 year old. Uh, my two youngest, I also have two older girls that are 12 and uh, 15, but the two boys, they cannot wait for Thursdays. We come up to the concert series and to come run around the playground, they have a ball. It oh, is, awesome. and, and when you see this uh, playground on Thursday evenings, you can't even walk through it, there's so many kids. So probably the most heavily used playground in our city. I love it. And now that we've got a little splash pad feature up top and you can grab some ice cream from Colin's, it's really a draw to come down here, whether it's a Thursday or any day of the week and experience the playground that's open to the public and able to come to. How about if someone wants to go out on the river? We have a really unique opportunity where even if you don't live on the river, you can rent a boat through your boat club, our watercraft operator down here at Mississippi Crossings, but you do live on the river. Can you give the residents who don't, maybe some tips on where would you go if we rented a boat for the day and wanted to go explore the river and experience that that majestic Mississippi. Yeah, if you have the opportunity to rent or uh, rent th through your boat club or get on the river uh, through someone else's boat, it is really a fun area to go explore and go boating. You would have a hard time believing you're right in Champlain when you're doing it. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do is bring someone on the river that's never been out there before. Uh, feel like you're up north somewhere boating. And uh, you can go from the bridge pretty much to the dam, which is a six, almost seven mile pool. Uh, even though like this year, the river's low, you're still pretty wide open. You have no issues. There's plenty of depth there. Uh, lots of areas to go up and down the river. 
Um, and then also we have the Rum River that comes in right across from us mm -hmm. here. Uh, you're able to go up into Anoka and they have docks up there and visit uh, downtown Anoka as well as our city docks here. We have Collins Ice Cream open every evening up here. Well, and, and I was going to say, if I rented a boat and I wanted to come up for these Thursday evenings you talk about, which we do want to mention the fun we have planned for tomorrow night, um, how easy is it to dock a boat at our boat docks here at Mississippi Crossings? Really easy. We have uh, some of the finger docks as well as a lot of uh, dock linear linear dock going down mm -hmm. the shoreline there to pull up to. So it's it's pretty simple to pull up and dock. Uh, it's an excellent way to get here. Awesome. When traffic's out on the roads, you pull up on boat and hop off on our, our dock system. Um, so there's no problem with that at all. Okay, awesome. And we're really excited. But before we wrap up, I do want to mention something special happening tomorrow night here at Mississippi Crossings during our Thursday MC Summer Series. What's happening tomorrow night? Yes, we're excited that we have Fox 9 coming here live at the 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. newscast. Local Champlin alumni, Hannah Flood, the anchor for Fox 9, will be here doing the show. We will be giving away, we partnered with Collins Ice Cream, local family business that operates here out of the event center. They will be giving away 300 ice cream cones uh, during the, between 5 and 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And so we're real excited. We have a great band on tap for tomorrow night. Should be, uh, looks like good weather. Mm -hmm. I assume heavily attended, so I'd get here early. Uh, we'll have uh, lots of food trucks. Tomorrow's food truck lineup is all local Champlin food trucks. Yeah, it's going to be a really yes. fun night. We're really excited. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. If you're curious and you want to hear more about the Mississippi Crossing Summer Series, watch this. All right, guys, here I am over at Mississippi Crossings Amphitheater. They're doing events every Thursday during the summer for their summer series. And uh, tonight, River Rats Dueling Pianos is playing tonight. I'm really excited about that because it's a music comedy show, and that should be a lot of fun. So come on, let's go. People have been arriving by car, bike, and by boat. It's almost <laughs> So that's right, if you have a boat, you are totally coming over here just to listen to the music, hang out on the boat, have a good time that way too. You are welcome. And there's the packed amphitheater right there. You having fun? Mm -hmm. Yeah? What do you see? Mm -hmm. You want to go to the boat? With stadium seating and camping chairs, you'll find a good spot. Even sitting on the lawn, on the grass, you'll find a good spot. Plus, obviously, there's a playground for the kids to keep them entertained, wear them out. <laughs> and long games in the plaza for the adults. All right, guys, that's the line for ice cream, the Collins ice cream window. They're being sold over there. I have to get in line uh, to enjoy my ice cream. My go-to flavor is mint chocolate chip. What's your guys' favorite? Yum. And this is only one of the performances that's lined up for the Summer Stage Series. I've only been to one, but there's a lot more in store. There's music, comedy, rock, country, pop, R&B. So there's something for everyone. You should really check it out for yourself. You'll have fun. Crowd goes wild.
Welcome back. We are still here live at Mississippi Crossings and now joining us is City Administrator Brett Highcamp. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so I'm excited because they just watched a snippet of the Mississippi Crossing Summer Series. Mm -hmm. It's our first summer to host these performances here at our outdoor performance area. And I just want to know what has the community feedback been like? Well, obviously, based on the turnout that we've experienced, it's been huge. Um, when, I think when we did the last one, we were uh, live and local. We were getting ready to open up the facility and whatnot. And I think beyond the community's uh, expectations, you know, parks and public works have, have just hit it out of the park. And, um, and if everything from booking the talent to providing the facility and and uh, it's forced us based on uh, the success of the events to uh, relook at budget 24 uh -huh. in terms of uh, parking lots the community uh, we were uh, council just authorized bids for the opening of an additional parking lot um, at Chandler Park which will just be over a hundred plus cars, and then uh, we're planning for option C, which is across 169, and we're gonna shuttle people under the, uh, the underpass uh, via the trail system. So beyond expectations. That's wonderful, and we've been able to partner with local food trucks right now until we get a restaurant built on site. Do you wanna talk a little bit more about we that? We do, we just met uh, with the developer and the uh, new restaurant operator this week in their equity and finance group. Um, so everything's in place there. Um, the operator is uh, extremely excited. I think it's going to be um, certainly an opportunity that doesn't exist in Champlin and probably doesn't exist in the Northwest Metro. That is really cool. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more detail around the restaurant when we sit down with our city planner, Lexi. Uh, coming up later in the show, but is there anything else you'd like to add about just some of the other things coming to this area and reaffirming the vision for this area? Well, the vision um, was obviously to activate the riverfront and reorient the community and the residents to the river itself. And um, again, just an absolute home run in that regard. Um, I think, you know, the the work we've done with the local community and bringing Chad Cullen and, and the ice cream in, and then uh, also, and I don't want to steal Lexi's thunder, but we've got a uh, small uh, restaurant and, and bakery that's coming in for grab and go um, specialty meats and so on, and that's going to be right here in the, in the off the parking lot. So a lot going on, um, pro, you know, from our perspective, uh, parking, parking, parking. I love that. And just looking at some of the key features we really wanted to make sure were happening here to activate that riverfront. Let's talk about this beautiful space where mm -hmm. residents can use in their hometown our place to live, to host events. You no longer have to leave our city. How's it been going with this new beautiful facility? It, it's great, obviously. All you have to do is get somebody in the building um, uh, to gain their appreciation for what it is. You know, it, we didn't have a meeting space that served more than 75 people. And um, so in this space, we can do almost double that, um, different setups for weddings and special events and so on. But um, that's the other aspect, I think, in terms of the development partner um, in what the restaurant is gonna have in terms of banquet space will allow them to do um, indoor and outdoor weddings um, 200 to 225 plus. So I think uh, from that standpoint, we've, we've checked most every one of the boxes that we set out to do. Um, when the vision was established in 1999, we connected the five community parks. We've provided the access to the river. Uh, we've brought the business community back into this area, which where it was originally. Um, so from that standpoint, there's a lot of people that have shared in, in a huge success story, and primarily the residents. I love that. And you did mention that we do have some great business partners that have invested here at Mississippi Crossings, even with being stage sponsors. Um, I do want to make sure we give some shout outs to them as mm -hmm. well as Graco. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got our summer stage series, series sponsors. Um, You've got Clive's Roadhouse and Tony and Linda Patterson, 
um, have been huge in this community since the day they walked in at Clive's. Um, Kurt Resch and his family with USA Inflatables, and then obviously Edward Jones and David have done um, a great job and continue to be strong community partners. And then lastly, obviously, with uh, Josh Brandstead and, and Greco. Um, they took a chance on Champlin when we were out banging on doors. Um, they realized and bought into the vision that the council had, um, and they're making it a reality, and I think people are gonna be astonished, um, you know, 20 to spring of 24 when the restaurant opens, it's gonna be, it's really gonna encapsulate what everybody envisioned up here. I love it, and I love that the vision is that we've activated the riverfront for residents, so we want you to come use this place, whether it's renting this beautiful facility, uh, residents get 10% off, which is another perk, um, whether it's using the public playground, coming to the free Thursday night events, uh, this place, Mississippi Crossings, is for the community, correct? It is, and um, you know, even we had um, our senator and our legislators in to recognize their help. Um, we've got some state bonding money originally with the construction of this, and now we got uh, some more again in 2023. Uh, for the parking lot at Chandler. So they understand the regional significance and what it means, not only Champlin, but the Northwest metropolitan area. Awesome, and let's say someone hasn't had a chance to experience Mississippi Crossings yet. We have some really fun events ahead that we wanna make sure everyone knows about. Mm -hmm. The farmer's market is moving here next month. And prior to that, since 2005, it's been in the Champlin Ice Forum parking lot. Um, why now move it here to Mississippi Crossings? Well, again, the, the vision of the community was the crossings was going to be the community gatherings point, uh, spot. Mm -hmm. And so um, while we've served a basic need in the, in the Ice Forum parking lot, I think the opportunity to bring it up here, uh, again, f to expose the, the residents and allow them to take advantage of, of what we've all been part of. I love that. And we have so much room here to even expand the market as we've got a much bigger parking lot than the Ice Forum has. And we were able to listen to the community and we'll be offering evening hours, Absolutely. Tuesdays from 2 to 6 p.m. starting July 11th. So there's an opportunity to come up and experience Mississippi Crossings, grab some fresh fruits and vegetables. And then also ahead, we will have some holiday markets. We will have Christmas at the Crossings returning. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, is there anything else you'd like to cover or share with the community to make sure that everyone is aware of this new beautiful facility? Take advantage of it. Um, if you haven't been up on a Thursday night and the mayor talked about it, but um, it is really um, a community fi uh, feel. And you know, we talk about our brand with Liv Champlin and um, my family and I, we've been here coming on 40 years now, and so we know a lot of people. Um, I see a lot of people up here, a lot of people I wouldn't expect to see up here. Um, and it's just that kind of an environment. It's got an aura, it's got a buzz, and that's exactly what we want. We want a place where the community can come, young and old, feel comfortable say, and enjoy. Yeah, there's so. something for kids, there's something for adults. I mean, they've got the bounce houses going thanks to mm -hmm. USA Inflatables. We've got food trucks. Um, one of our biggest partners, which we're going to learn a little bit more about later, Elm Creek Brewing Company mm -hmm. here, helping provide adult beverages as well as the different performances. So there's just truly something for everyone. It is. And as the mayor mentioned, Thursday night, we've got the all Champlin lineup with the food trucks and, you know, we'll, we're counting Lookout as, you know, their second location here in Champlin and Andrews Park. Um, so come on up and support Chili Lime and, and um, who am I missing? Um, oh, OD, the ODB's meet, up here. Yeah, so, meet yeah. and greet tomorrow be, It'll night. be a great night. Good band. Um, should be a great time. And Fox 9 and will be Fox here, 9. which is really exciting to be chosen as one of their summer ice cream social locations. I mean, people from all around come to experience the Fox 9 ice cream social night. We're getting the exposure Champlin hoped we would. Awesome. So. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. Um, next up, we're going to uh, talk about Mississippi Crossing shovel ready development sites. And joining us will be city planner Lexi. So stay tuned, we'll be right back.
UCTV is proud to announce award recognition for 2022, including 10 Telly Awards. two ACM Hometown Media Awards. QCTV is dedicated to providing high quality content for our community. We are grateful for the support and we look forward to another exciting year here at QCTV. Welcome back. Well, if you haven't been to this part of Mississippi Crossings, or you haven't driven down the 169 Highway Corridor, you really must because we have lit it up. Our place to live is lit up in green and blue lights every time you drive north or south on 169 from West River Road all the way up to the bridge and then back south as well. And we're really excited because this project has been in the making for quite a while as a part of our 169 upgrade project and redevelopment of the Mississippi Crossings area. And it's just really wonderful because these lights are LED color changing. So Champlin, get ready because we are going to be able to change it to red, white, and blue this weekend in honor of the July 4th holiday ahead. And then once we get to Halloween, we can go to purple and orange and Christmas colors and Hanukkah colors, and we can really do it all. So when it's not a holiday, you'll be sure to see our place to live, Champlin Green and Blue, lighting the way as you go north and south on 169. And that's just one small little piece of development news because now joining us, we have city planner Lexi Wyhe. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. So let's talk through some of the development pieces in Mississippi Crossings we haven't talked about yet, which is we keep talking about local businesses and they might be watching thinking, man, I want to be a part of that. We've developed this area. We've really put the spotlight back on local businesses. What if someone's out there watching and wants to know, are there any shovel ready sites available? Yeah, we do. We have a few um, additional shovel ready sites in the Mississippi Crossings area that are commercially guided. Um, if anyone's interested in, in them, they should just contact the community development department and we can get them some more information. Perfect. And if I had no idea how to get a hold of you, what would be the best way to contact you? Yes, you can go on the City of Champlain's website and go under our staff directory and you can find my um, contact information or just the, the general um, community development information. Awesome. I love that. And where are those sites located in case someone's curious how close they would be to the proximity of 307 East River Parkway, which is this Mississippi Crossings area? Yeah, so we have a site right next to Applewood Point um, across the street from the Sinclair. And then we also have a site on the opposite corner from um, Sinclair, um, just across Highway 169. And then also just south of here, south of the Bowline um, on the south side of 169 as well. Those are awesome prime real estate spots. Love that. Wonderful. And then when you look at the immediate Mississippi Crossings area, this part of 307 East River Parkway, there are two big ads still coming. I want to talk a little bit more about them because I know City Administrator Brett mentioned them, but let's talk restaurant and tell us a little bit more about the details behind the restaurant, some of the perks. Yes, yeah, so the restaurant is expected to start construction later this year. Um, it's about a 10,000 square foot building with a large rooftop and a large patio, so you'll be able to enjoy drinks and food out there, um, hopefully next summer, and uh, maybe listen to some music during the, the stage series as well. Oh my gosh, that would be the most amazing ad for this place. And just, I know when I'm here at the event center and I stand on this outdoor balcony, the view of the river is just incredible. So. I can't even imagine once I'm a couple levels up sitting on a rooftop patio and enjoying that view. It should be absolutely amazing. Um, how about there's a little lot that some people might not recognize, a little triangular lot right in front of the Bowline Apartments. Mm -hmm. What is set to be, be built there? Yes, yeah, so for that lot, um, there is approved plans by the City Council for a market and deli there. It's about 5,000 square feet, and they specialize in ready-to-go items, bakery items, coffee, um, fresh produce, and meats. Awesome. How wonderful if you're just popping up to the park to use the playground or the splash pad and you just want to grab a quick bite. That would be an amazing ad to really complete this crossings area. I love that. And then um, until 
those two places are, are ready. We have some really wonderful business partners in our food trucks and Elm Creek Brewing Company. Tell us a little bit about their company because they have expanded recently. Yeah, they actually just celebrated their third anniversary here in Champlin, so we're very grateful to have them in our community. Um, they recently finished an, an expansion project um, to their facility to expand upon their manufacturing facility in the back for um, producing their good beers that we all enjoy. Awesome, wonderful. And we do have a story on them coming up, so viewers who are curious will get to learn a little bit more about Elm Creek Brewing Company. Um, but also, Cullen's has been a great local business, and they are the event center concessionaire serving ice cream and treats out of our window right here. Um, talk a little bit about their partnership and the local business support there. Yeah, so Cullen's is here um, daily, and they are our ice cream and goodies concessionaire for our Thursday night concert series. So come on up, grab an ice cream cone or some other goodies. Awesome, I love that. And then what about Mississippi Crossing's other updates on the area? I know Brett, Brett mentioned that we actually just got approved to add more parking, which I definitely want to talk parking because we've heard from the residents that where can I park when I come to Mississippi Crossings if I don't get one of the 300 stalls out front? Yes, yeah, so we have um, at DC Chandler Park, just down the way, a short walk, we are reconstructing that parking lot to add parking stalls. That's going to have 115 parking stalls total. Um, that construction will start later this year. As mentioned, the plans were just approved by our city council, um, so we'll be going out for bids soon, and then you'll see some construction starting there. So that's a, a short walk for you to park um, coming soon. Awesome. And until that's ready, there is a lot I want to talk about that many don't realize is a parking lot and has very wonderfully easy access to Mississippi Crossings. Can you tell us a little bit more about the lot across the highway that you can access through the pedestrian tunnel? Yes, yeah, so we have a um, more of a grassy field right now that's good for <laughs> overflow parking yeah. um, on Dean Avenue. It's next to um, EMC Services or the Animal Hospital if you're familiar with either of those. Um, and you can pull in and use that as overflow parking if you need to. And then like you said, access the crossings area via the pedestrian underpass. Yes, I know my kids think it's just the coolest. So actually, even if there is a spot out front, they like to park there and be able to walk underneath the highway. It's kind of one of those really cool highlights that we've added to this whole Mississippi Crossing series, the ability to park there if there's overflow need mm -hmm. and experience walking underneath the highway is, is quite the treat. So, awesome. What are some other community development projects around town? I know we've talked a lot about Mississippi Crossings. It's such a wonderful thing to have this summer, but there's other stuff happening around town. Tell us a little bit. Yes, that's correct. So Twin City Twisters, who's been a long time um, uh, facility in Champlin, they've been here since 1987, has recently started um, construction of a new facility. They just started construction this spring. Um, it's about a 40,000 square foot building there, just south of Willie McCoy's, and we're excited for them to stay in Champlin and continue to have their facility here. Awesome, and some people might be wondering, so what are they gonna do with their other two sites that they currently have? Yeah, so their original site in Champlin, they are keeping that um, as they are busy enough, so they need it for additional space. And then their site that they've had in Brooklyn Park for the past few years, um, they're no longer going to have that one. Awesome, wonderful. And then I believe we have another project around town too. Yeah, so the Emory Village neighborhood just south of Goodwill is getting um, some new neighbors. They'll have 40 new condo units there that also started at construction this spring. Um, and so we can welcome those new neighbors once that project's finished. Awesome, wonderful. Um, so I know we've talked a lot about community development. How about let's switch topics to golf carts in Champlin because it's been a big one this summer. It's new. As of May 22nd, you can get a permit. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about how it's been going with golf carts being approved on certain streets in Champlin. Yeah, so like you mentioned, we started golf cart permits on May 22nd. Um, they're through the police department. And so far, in just a little bit over a month, they've had 17 permits that they've approved and have gone out. Um, so golf carts are here in Champlin. That's amazing. And for those who aren't aware, maybe give us a little detail on why. Why did City Council say, okay, let's consider golf carts in Champlin? Yeah, so we are really using it as a neighborhood connectivity thing, our feel. Um, so just make sure you pay attention to the map because there is certain designated city roads that you can drive on and certain roads you cannot drive on, as well as you cannot drive on sidewalks or trails. Um, so just pay attention to that. Awesome, wonderful. What are some of the rules and regulations when it comes to I own a golf cart, I want to get a permit, what do I need to know? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so there's a few rules. Um, some of the big ones that I'll highlight is you have to be 16 years of, or older with a driver's license to drive a golf cart. Um, you have to drive on the designated roads, like I mentioned. Um, you can only drive from May to October, that golf cart season. Um, and then there's certain things that you have to have on your golf cart, such as the permit sticker that you get has to be on your rear bumper. Um, you have to have parking brakes. You have to have a rear view mirror and a slow moving vehicle emblem on that golf cart. Um, other other things for to note for golf cart regulations is you can only drive from sun, sunrise to sunset. Awesome, and it's my understanding that this summer is kind of our trial, and then city council is going to look at it and decide how we move forward with permits for next year, correct? That's correct. So when city council approved um, golf carts earlier this spring, they had um, a plan to relook at it later this year, see how it went over the 2023 season, um, and then decide if it'll be continuing into 2024. Awesome, wonderful. Well, one more time in case someone's like, what did she say again? Where do I go for a permit? Where do they go to get their permit? Yeah, so you can um, either visit the police department in person and they'll help you out or go onto our website and go to the police department's page. Under that is a section for golf carts and our permit is right there. Um, you can fill it out and give it to the police department. We also have all these rules that I mentioned on our websites. If, so if you forgot or want to revisit them um, and check out the map, just go to our website. Awesome, wonderful. Well, before we wrap in other business news, I think we had two other things we wanted to share with the community. Yeah, so one of those is the park and ride on 117th and West River Road um, is now closed as of June 17th. Um, the usership of that just significantly declined, and so we, um, in, in partnership with Metro Transit, decided to close that facility. So if you are a user of the parking rides here or want to use them, our Richardson Park parking lot um, is still open for that use, and so is the 100, or excuse me, um, 610 and Noble parking lot in Brooklyn Park is available for your use. Perfect, awesome update. And then possibly some exciting news for West River Road. Yeah, potentially. Um, so Three River Park District is conducting a feasibility study right now on a potential trail from 109th to Hayden Lake Road. It's 3.5 miles of trail there. Um, and they are currently just in their feasibility study phase um, for that trail. It's the West um, or excuse me, yes, the West Mississippi River Regional Trail there. Um, so they are currently hosting a virtual meeting on July 12th to share some information, listen to the public's feedback, and answer any questions. So if anyone's interested in learning more, you can attend those events on the 12th of July. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today and sharing so much of your insight. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, we're going to pause now to take a look at one of the local businesses we've been talking about all show long, Elm Creek Brewing Company. They've celebrated their third year in Champlin and an expansion. And then when we return, we'll be back sitting down with our new police chief. Hi, I'm Mitch Carlson. I'm co-owner and general manager of Elm Creek Brewing Company alongside my partner, my dad, Wade Carlson. Uh, we opened up in June 2020 and we're just coming off of our third year anniversary. Over the last three years, Elm Creek Brewing Company has become a staple in Champlin as the destination for great beer and social gatherings. And now they're expanding both the space of their brew house as well as their involvement with the city of Champlin and their community. This year, the city of Champlin invited us to be part of their Mississippi Crossings event that, that just opened up this year. Um, it's been a huge success for us so far. We really appreciate the involvement in that. It's been really fun to see the whole community come together, see a lot of people that are regulars here, lots of new faces, old faces, people that I grew up with in the city. So it's been really fun to be able to see all that come together. Mitch also gave me a tour of both the old and new brew house spaces to show me how much more variety and efficiency Elm Creek Brewing will be able to provide to their customers. We opened up as a five barrel brew house. We only had four fermenters, quickly grew into what was six, eight, and then 10 fermenters. Um, we now have kind of outgrown that space a lot more rapidly than we thought we were going to. So we just added on an additional 3,500 square feet. We uh, tripled the size of our brew house. We are now a 15 barrel brew house. We also upgraded into our own canning line so that we can do everything on site and nothing by hand. It's all automated, so everything's a lot easier. Our beer 
quality is going to skyrocket compared to what it was in the past. Alongside with our addition that we just put on, we are also upgrading our tap tree. We're going to be starting to put a lot more focus on easy drinking crisp lagers. Um, it's something that all of us here uh, have a passion for and love to drink. Um, we're also going to have uh, expanding our rare candy sour series as well as IPAs, um, different kinds of ales, Belgian wit beers, just a whole variety of that, and as well as a larger barrel age program. Alongside the expansion of the brew house, Elm Creek Brewing Company is looking forward to expanding their in-house summer attractions to be available for people of all ages. Make sure to check the event calendar on their website to see all their offerings throughout the year. We're going to be doing a lot of family days where we have the whole back patio blocked off towards family related events. So anywhere from like petting zoos, um, reptile demonstrations, movie nights. We have just got expanded seating and a grass area where people can relax, bring their pets, their children, hang out and enjoy a nice quality beer. Um, we also, uh, our Oktoberfest party every year has always been only one day. This year we're expanding it to a whole week's uh, a whole week of events. It's going to be focused mostly on loggers. It's going to be called Logtoberfest. We haven't settled out all the details yet, but it's going to be anywhere from four to eight new loggers that we'll release all the way through the week with our um, Oktoberfest release being the day of our big party. Welcome back. Now joining me, we have newly appointed Police Chief Glenn Schneider. Welcome. Thank you. And congratulations again. Thank you. Appreciate it. We appreciate you sitting down with us because you were just appointed on Monday. So I love that you made time to come and talk to the community and let them see your face and really get to know you. Absolutely. Um, I would love for you to expand a little bit, start off with just talking about your background. I mean, I'm not sure everyone knows you've been with Champlin for 24 plus years. Sure, sure. Um, so I grew up in Blaine, grew up in the area um, and joined the Army. When I got out of the Army, as I was going through college, I became a police reserve for the city of Champlin. So mm -hmm. in 1997, to 1999, I was actually a volunteer here with the city as a police reserve. Um, when I completed college, when I completed my skills, that's when I got hired as a police officer, and I've been here ever since. That's amazing. Talk about some of the positions you've held during that time. Absolutely. As a patrol officer, um, not only was I a patrol officer responding to calls and doing proactive work, um, I was also a field training officer, so I was training new employees as they came in, new officers, to train them to be officers as well. Um, I spent time as a narcotics detective with the Anoka Hennepin Drug Task Force. I spent time as a general investigator with the city of Champlin. Um, I spent a very, very minor time being a firearms instructor where I really never instructed, but I got to experience it. Okay, and you did a couple of really special programs for Champlin. Talk about the yellow ribbon and heart safe. Absolutely, when I came off patrol and got promoted to a sergeant, you start to get assigned additional duties. But one of the duties I was actually volunteered for was the yellow ribbon program, which is a veteran-based, veteran-sponsored program where uh, we get together and we try and find ways to help veterans who are in need. Um, and so along with city council and some other volunteers, we spearheaded the Beyond the Yellow Ribbon campaign for the city of Champlain to eventually get in that designation. Um, one of the other campaigns we went through more recently was the Heart Safe Initiative, where our goal is to make Champlain a more heart aware and heart safe community by providing education on um, heart safe CPR, if you will, because there's no longer giving, we're no longer giving breaths, we're doing compressions mm -hmm. as a lay person. The officers, we still provide oxygen and do additional information or additional mm -hmm. stuff. But as a heart safe trained person, we teach you how to give compressions, how to use an AED, how to notify the emergency chain of command so that we can get services coming. And that. so we worked through that and eventually became designated as a heart safe city. Wow. Well, I know you've held almost every position there is, which I love. What do you love most about taking on this new role, this new step, this next step? Absolutely. Um, certainly growing through my career, I've, and I have experienced a lot of different positions, and you learn so much more about police work each time. Um, as an administrative sergeant, I never knew what the back office of a police department looked like, how it, how it actually functions. You know, I thought as a police officer, hey, I need this, get it for me, right? And it came... Um, I didn't realize what that was. And as a deputy chief, I learned a lot about budgeting. And now as a chief, I get to take those tools and 
help guide and direct this police department as we move forward. And that's what I'm excited about is what comes next. Yeah, talk a little bit more about that. So what is the state of the department and then some future goals? Sure. Um, as with most metropolitan police departments, we are shorthanded and we are currently hiring. So if anybody is looking for a job, please apply. Um, we are authorized 30 police officers. We currently have 25. Um, and our goal is to get to 30 by the end of the year. We have some incentives and some initiatives that we are proposing and looking forward and hopefully these come to fruition and we get to use that. Um, as we get towards staffing, we are looking for some more to apply more resources towards some additional community outreach programs and, and some of the things we have talked about that we'd like to see come around uh, perhaps even as soon as next summer is a summer safety camp or an additional citizens academy. And these are all things that require more personnel to do, but it's something I think is important that we, we really want to get going towards this. And that's one thing your department does so well, those community outreach events. They're just wonderful. Um, I was lucky enough to get a spot in one of the recent summer safety camps, and the parents who went through that just said the same thing. We want more. We want more. Yes. Um, I love that your officers do. Talk about some of the fun summer outreach things you're doing right now. Sure. So we did just recently offer what we call Safe at Home, where we, uh, we had room for 25 I think we got it up to 27, we made a little exception, um, where we taught kids how to be safe at home while their parents were gone at work during the summertime. You know, what are some of the fire aware and health mm -hmm. aware and, and stranger safety aware items you can look at? And, and more, just a little bit past from that, we did a um, internet safety class for parents where we taught parents what internet what your kids are doing today on the internet and how you should be aware of social media. And, and we look forward to teaching that again this fall, not only at the parent level, but bringing in the youth and bringing in, and teaching it for them. Um, coming up this summer, of course, we have night to night, August 1st, um, the first Tuesday of every August, and it's always been a success in Champlain. We are currently taking applications for households who want to host a party, and you can find that at our website. Um, we're really looking forward to another successful night to night. Um, in August, there will be a meet and greet with myself, um, and I'm not a self-promoter, but I'll be there. So <laughs> look forward to that. We are looking forward to that. We have some addition, yes, we have some additional coffees with cops and some other outreach meet and greet events with the police officers you'll be able to see. Awesome. Yeah, you guys always do the ice cream uh, with an officer, and you guys always do shop with a cop in December. Yes. Just some amazing community outreach things, and even... Earlier today, I got a little note that you guys have been out and about rewarding kids for wearing their helmets while yes. biking. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, so we, Dairy Queen provides us with uh, coupons, if you will, to give out as we see fit for youth doing safe, um, doing things safely. Mm -hmm. And so we really target wearing helmets mm -hmm. when you're riding your bikes or if you're at skateboard park. Um, being strapped in if you're in a car appropriately. And so not only do our officers carry them in their squad cars and look for the youth to interact with and provide them that opportunity for them to get an ice cream cone, but we also run an active bike patrol. And our bike patrollers are out looking for anybody that they can communicate with. And sometimes we happen upon somebody doing the right thing as Officer Lommers did yesterday and uh, provided them with a coupon so they can go get a cone from Dairy Queen. Awesome, I love that, those are great. Um, one other event we forgot to mention that I don't want to forget about is big trucks coming up, just yes. in case someone's like, well, how can I get inside one of those police cars? My kid's been dying to see inside one of those. Um, talk a little bit about the, the big trucks event where they might get a chance to see some of the cool stuff. Absolutely, so big trucks and cool stuff still, or is it just big trucks? It's big trucks and cool stuff, yes, on big, August 3rd. Big trucks and cool stuff is uh, August 3rd at the uh, city campus by Public Works and every year that we've participated, we've had a few of our squad cars um, there along with officers so that the kids can not only climb into squad cars and look at the equipment, but we'll have some of our tools of our craft will be there too so they can hold up a, a ballistic shield if they want or look at some of the other items that we keep in our cars and carry around. Uh, we also have our drones there. We fly drones and so we do have drones there where we can let the kids look at what that looks like and how it works and teach parents as well about it and let that interaction happen. Awesome. Well, it sounds like we have a bunch of events ahead where they can come meet you. They can yep. come see the big trucks and cool stuff. Um, they can ride around Champlain safely with a helmet and possibly get an ice cream coupon. I love that. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with the community today? No, I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for this opportunity um, and I'm looking forward to 
uh, what the future might hold. Uh, it's, it's exciting. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Appreciate Chief. It. We get to call you that now. Congratulations again. Thank you. Appreciate so that. exciting. Um, well, we can't wait to announce when we're going to have your community meet and greet. The only thing I can say is watch our website, watch our Facebook pages, and we will make sure that the community is aware and welcome to join us here at the event center so they can ask you questions in person themselves. Most definitely. All right. Well, summer is not over yet. There's still so much fun ahead in Champlin. We've got a lot of events coming up in July and August. You heard about our Thursday night MC Summer Series, but now you're going to take a look at some of our really fun family events ahead. And then when we return, we'll talk more. Champlin, summer is starting to heat up, especially when it comes to getting outdoors and enjoying some great park and rec events. Starting Tuesdays in July, the Champlin Farmer's Market has moved from the ice farm to Mississippi Crossing. You can still expect the same great local fruits and vegetables and, of course, bread from area farmers and bakers. It literally doesn't get fresher than this. Andrews Park is hosting a Jump It Up Bounce House event on Saturday, July 15th. There will be over a dozen large inflatables, including water slides. Several food trucks will be on site to refuel for all day jumping. Get out and meet your neighbors at the 19 Night event on Tuesday, August 1st. 19 Night is a crime prevention event designed to bring neighbors together in a friendly and social atmosphere. You can register your block party on the city's website. Stop by the Public Works Yard on Thursday, August 3rd from 4 to 7 for the Big Trucks and Cool Stuff event. Get an up-close look at a one-ton truck, tractor backhoe, front end loader, skid steer, and tons more. Police and fire will also be on site with their vehicles. If you've ever wanted to sit behind the wheel of these giants, now is your chance. The last big family event of the season is the Nerf Blaster Battle on August 25th at Andrews Park. The Lookout and the Corn Dog Company will be on site so you can enjoy dinner in the park as well. Be sure to stay after the battle for the movie starting at dusk. This year, it's the Academy Award winning Top Gun Maverick. And this is just a taste of all that summer has to offer in the city of Champlain. For a full list of events, be sure to check out the city's website. So get out there and enjoy. Thanks for watching Live and Local Champlain. That's a wrap for today's show. Until next time, remember Champlain is our place to live, so live it up.